Hello, welcome to TFLP Microcasters. Tonight, I am joined by the usual crew, Christian and Anna. Plus one. Well, I was getting there, and I'm Lucas, and then we have a special guest star here, uh, Phil. Good evening. And so the reason that we have a uh, a guest is because Christian decided after the Maverick thing that he's like, you know what, I am not going to get the like crossovers that I don't necessarily like, and so he does not have the figure. And so we brought in, you know, a pinch hitter to uh, to give us his thoughts. And, I have and I'm just here to look pretty. <laughs> exactly. Mission accomplished. You'll accomplish it, but the main one looking pretty is right here. Oh, so Christian, by the way, like if we give it like What's a up? glowing review, are you going to potentially get it? Or is it definitely like you're not getting it until it shows up on 70% off clearance? I'll let you know at the end. Fair enough. Oh, 25% off target then. coupon. Yeah, I won't buy it for full price, I don't think. We have to try to convince him to buy it. This is challenge mode. So, yeah, so we got this, and I think that we all thought this is definitely an Anna figure, right? <laughs> I don't know if everyone thought that. <laughs> I definitely yeah, I don't. That. I know it's it's sort of outside the box, but I didn't immediately think of Anna. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what Anna's ties to the other, you know, crossover material is. She hates all the good ones, and she really likes the bad ones. I never said I hated the other. She ones. hates Ectotron, and she I, hates Gigawatt. I don't right? hate them. They are okay. You said they're the worst. You, no, you called them the earlier earlier today. You called them dull and boring. Yes. Ectotron is definitely a, kind of a dull toy. Yeah. <gasps> Ectotron's incredible. How I, dare I, you? I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that. Had you transformed that hotspot mold before you got the like Ectotron version of it, and you did it again? Yeah. It, it's a really good looking Ecto One. Yeah, it's a great Ecto One. A mediocre robot and a boring transformation. And and Gigawatt was really good. I don't know what people are saying that it was not good. Like it was that was a fantastic DeLorean. I mean, it's I like, think yeah. too. Part, part of this has to do with like the source material. So like if you're really into the source material, I know again, Anna is not necessarily a back to the future or ghostbusters fan. I know this stuff. And so, yeah. So whereas, you know, this guy, uh, X pants or whatever you, you are an X-Men fan. So. Yes. Especially of the nineties cartoon that this is inspired by. That was like my, period of x-man-ness x-menace <laughs> uh, but like i didn't dislike giga jiga Watt at all i just thought it was you know sideswipe and i thought that the blockier chest made it less fun than sideswipe so yeah, no, it just, yeah. i'm sorry go, go ahead i apologize <laughs> oh no go ahead phil i was just no no let me finish your point because this will this will maybe make more sense in a few moments I think that was it, though. I mean, I was just saying that I, I like Sideswipe and I like Gigawatt, but I think that Sideswipe is more fun for me, just being a, like, thinner type of robot man. Yeah. That's, you're that's you're saying that I'm... you don't like thick men? Is that what you're saying? Definitely not what I was saying. Also, I don't use that term because I'm over 30. I'm not. <laughs> sure. So, so Anna, going back to your experience with the X Men, is it is it fair to say that during the '90s is when you wore your X pants? It is. It is. It actually is. Yes, yeah. it is when I so, wore my X pants. I I watched the show after school most days, and I, I really did enjoy it. Am I wrong in thinking that the Blackbird in the show is, you know, black and not blue? 
It is. Yeah. It's, it is black. Okay, cool. Yeah. Because I was thinking that if this thing was black, I would have bought it immediately. But then it's just Studio Series Jetfire, so. Right. But but they, they would oftentimes show it with blue highlights. Is that what it is? Okay. Yes. And and the the nineties Toy Biz X Men Blackbird was this same color blue. I see. And the, the box, of course, is very much inspired by that line. I really like that packaging. Yeah. Maybe the I'll packaging was box. really fun. I'll keep the toy, you keep the box, we're good to go. Okay. And maybe. Well, yeah, this packaging's cool. It's and using the same font is very classy of them to do. Like it's sort of interesting because you have like a really mixed bunch of X-Men stuff here. So I'm going to go like down a nerd rabbit hole and get really nitpicky. The box and the, the toys, the, the minifigures that come with it are very nineties X-Men Jim Lee style art, the nineties cartoon, the, the blackbird mode itself is not 100% accurate to that. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's close. It's, it's more, actually similar to an actual SR, you know, 71 Blackbird. Um, hence, you know, based upon the mold is based on makes sense. Um, now, the Blackbird they show on the packaging looks more like the movie Blackbird, which <laughs> is even like sort of more of an out there design. And, and I think it was just like leaked this week that in the next Hot Wheels uh, release, they're going to have an X-Men uh, movie Blackbird. Uh, coming to you as a Hot Wheel. I don't know if it's one of the more higher end Hot Wheels for like five bucks, or if it's one of the ninety nine cent Hot Wheels. But you know, I'll be I'll pick it up either way. But it's um, yeah. So you've got you've got the the nineties X Men artwork and design and all that stuff. You've got kind of the movie Blackbird on the box, and then it says the word Ultimates in the name, which is like no, the Ultimates comics weren't Ultimate X Men weren't this X Men. Ultimates didn't come into the 2000s, and that was a totally different universe. So I didn't that word Ultimates that out of here. Pick, that, is a, that is the pickiest of nits. Oh, yeah. That's that's a deep, deep-cut nitpick right there that yeah, you should not be using. I just not realized using... where the term nitpick came from. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's <laughs> uh, I, if you call him Uncanny Expanse, that would make so much more sense. That would make a lot mm. more sense. You're right. Yeah. I thought the ultimate felt out of place. I didn't think it for that reason, but I definitely saw ultimate X pants and was like, why is it named this? Yeah. I mean, technically it's half black, half blue, right? Like if you show off the yeah. jet mode, it's like, there's it's a lot of black. black in there. Yeah. That is true. That is a good It point. almost, the ultimate name the, the, with the word ultimate in the name almost makes me feel like if I didn't know the, the toy line better, it's like, is there is there a regular X pants? Like, do I need to go find like a, <laughs> a smaller version? There's like a deluxe size X pants, and this is the ultimate X pants. And, I and, you honestly know. think the ultimate was just there to reflect '90s cheesiness. I really do. Right. Like, I think it was just like this is the ultimate version of the toy because you know a lot of things were called ridiculous over. But they did. Names they like did that. the '90s gimmick by making his name X dash pants. Yeah versus the word expanse um that yeah. was the whole thing like there's there's a you know the, the character adam x the extreme whose name was spelled x dash t-r-e-m-e -E. and there was the executioner who was an x-men villain whose name was spelled x dash you know, don't make me spell trutioner you know live here um but but yeah that was that was a big theme in like 1993 that's true that's a good yeah. point so, but like, why is he called that? Like, X like, are, were they were they looking for X type names, and that's what they came up with? Wait, like, that would be my guess. So he's expansive. Is he just is he huge? Like, I don't know. It's just he's weird. Right? He's expansive. He's a pretty big toy. He's a he real is, yeah. Toy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially that box. Like, when you get that box in the mail, it's like, oh, this is this is not a small figure. Oh my god, that yeah, box is as beautiful as that box is, it is very wasteful with yes. space. Like it's far too big. Yeah. I didn't but I didn't the... do a size comparison. How does he stack up compared to like leader Jetfire? Well, well considering the Jetfire is Rez. shorter because he hunches over, but And the I don't only have one of us who has him is me. The one who doesn't <laughs> I meant, have that um, I meant Siege Leader Jetfire. Oh, oh. 
Um, I don't... significantly shorter than that. Yeah, he's okay. shorter than that. He's a pretty. I mean, he's obviously class toy, slimmer but... stature, but but I didn't know height wise how. So I had him up against Grimlock up until like a couple days ago, standing beside each other, and they look like they would come from the same era of price points, right? Like they yeah. feel they feel right both being leaders. Like Grimlock is definitely bulkier and wider. Expanse is more complex looking, which is accurate. It is a more complex yeah. figure. So I, I don't feel like I overpaid for him. For Expanse? Yeah. I'm a little confused. Did you get him I... on sale or I got him like it was like I bought him from Target uh, on their website and I got a ten dollar gift card for like spending over fifty dollars on a toy. So yeah, I, that that finally popped into my Target wallet, um, you know, three months after making the purchase because of the, the time between the actual pre-order and the actual shipping of the toy. I know Lucas and I both had coupons, so we yeah. saved a little bit on it, about 10 bucks. Yeah. So, so it was just a little over 50 for me. Yeah, so the jet mode, like, I mean, it looks really good. I really like the Jet Mode when I played with it. Like, I haven't gone back. We'll get to that later. But I really thought it was neat. Like, it has good details. It's simple. It's what it is. My biggest complaint in really in both modes is those wings are, like, all floppy. I don't know if yours is somehow not. But, yeah, it's like, like, that's my biggest annoyance. I, I tend to pop them off when I'm transforming the legs. Yeah. I apparently popped them off too because I found them both on the floor today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in mine I noticed they had stress marks on them from like popping off and whatnot. So. Oh goodness. Yeah, mine had came with the stress marks like right here on. Is this what is this uh, the 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 engines? Yeah, the engines right there came with stress marks. They have not gotten worse. And so I'm not sure necessarily why there were stress marks there. I don't know if it was maybe due to the packaging, but it, it's, it's sort of weird because it, it makes it almost look, maybe it's not even stress marks. Maybe it's like shave marks because it's on yeah. two different parts of the, uh, of uh, two different parts of the figure. I think that those are actually like the, whatever the gate marks or whatnot, you know, that like, cause mine had those two. <coughs> um, I can't remember which part it was, but yeah. I don't know if it's easy to see in robot mode. Oh, here it is. Like the inside, if you can tell like the inside of the leg. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 So I, I think that was just like the molding, like, you know, whatever the gating. I think so, too. Yeah, it, it doesn't bother me that much. Yeah. Yeah, but the jet mode's fun. It has it has all the landing gear it should, right? It has three pieces yeah. of it. Yeah. Although the the back two landing gears are sort of funky because they yeah. they work and look good. Yeah, um, nobody... He's just got his two little nubs on his waist. Yeah. It's definitely odd. I just put them back to make them. I don't know what's going on. For some reason, the internet's like a little choppy here. Okay. I don't know why you you like you just cut out a little bit. Oh yeah, I watched myself a few seconds later. Yeah. I know. What's Everyone going on. but you froze in the feed, Lucas. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know what's I don't know if it's Skype or what it is. We will we will power through. So yeah, the jump mode I thought was really cool. I liked it. I, I think it's these little dummies aren't um they aren't proportional to the jet at all, right? Like they're way too big. No, they're way too big. I really wish those things didn't come with this toy. I I would but agree. Like the like Wolverine silly, looks weird. Wolverine yeah, the Wolverine, not, they messed up the face. I am not yeah. comfortable with Wolverine. <laughs> He's a very uncomfortable figure. Yeah, it's it, it it is not it is not a great representation yeah. of 
his face looks like Batman at best, and it's like, yeah. like yeah. the picture on I, the box doesn't look as bad. I know, but the picture they the box didn't actually has much paint. They didn't put that extra paint app on there, so then his whole face is black, and it's just it looks weird to me. No, they mixed a little bit of the yellow with the black on there, so it's just this kind of like greenish yellow color for his face. Where, oh, oh okay. maybe he's I didn't small. even notice that. That's it. Yeah. He's small Wolverine because his face is green. Get it? Ha! Huh. Yeah, yeah, everything's solved. Yeah, he does kind of look like that. There we go. See? I explained it away. Now we like it better. Nope. Yeah. I, I actually think Sabretooth came up better because yeah. he's, his paint apps are more minimal. So it's almost like he's just straight on painted. And you can actually. I, I feel like the mold is slightly face. better too. Yeah. he You can see all the sculpted detail on his face. Like he feels like he yeah. should. He kind of reminds me of. Um, like, quality-wise, he reminds me of when they did um, Marvel Hero Clicks. Yeah, you remember the game, he's about yeah. the full, the first that, run of those, which that, wasn't great. No, you're spot on. Like, the size and everything about that definitely, definitely reminds me of Hero Clicks. The Hero Clicks paint jobs were actually a little bit better. And that's sad because the Hero Clicks paint jobs were terrible back then. The Hero Clicks paint jobs were all, like, you know, it, it was, like, <laughs> some dude who was painting his own minifigures, who just started painting his own minifigures. Yeah. Like this was the first time they're like, Hey man, I'm going to, I'm going to try painting my own minifigures. Like, all right, cool. Like, you know, they show them off. Like, ah, I mean, you're getting there, you know, you know, for your first try, it's not bad. <laughs> and it's like, Oh no, wait, these were mass release toys. Uh, no, no, that's, that doesn't cut it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was just like, you know, the other crossovers have had like pretty good accessories. And so I don't know with like this that they're like, all right, what can we actually put in here? Because, I mean, if they just put in blast effects, I think people would be like, OK, come on. Like, that's not really not enough. So they try. These to guys weren't these needed, guys though. Here. Like, what's the equivalent of these guys? Like quarter machines? When you put the quarter and you turn the crank, you get the little catch upon yeah. ball. Right. That's and what these feel like to me. And this accessory to me is the most, like, just upsetting of the three. Because this is a power effect for the character Psylocke or Betsy Braddock or now, you know, Captain Britain. But it's not big enough to go on Expanse's head. And what they show you to do on it is you take the power effect and put it around Wolverine to show he's powered up, which is not... Like, I don't understand it. It's like they they made... I don't know if they made this and realized after they, like, produced them that it was too small, so they had to figure out something else to do with it because this is what it's supposed to look like for, you know, the Psylocke character. So Expanse, you know, for as much as he looks like Wolverine and Cyclops mismatched, he has the the one accessory, the one blast effect that's sort of like the the single blade and that's supposed to kind of represent i, I believe psylocke's that's psychic what i thought dagger. too and but this is psylocke the way her face is when she's using her power and she gets that that butterfly effect around her face which is again what this is but this doesn't do that this it doesn't is sit the on same around the waist and it shows it on the box like wrap it around the waist power effect i, I think they like like they make a kind of big deal about it on the back of the box. And it's like, no, these are just three pieces of plastic that I hope I don't lose. So if I ever do resell this guy that I have all the parts, is it the same, the same piece, piece from that side lock figure or is it? A no, new piece? no, it's, it's, it's significantly different. If they had honestly used the piece from the side lock figure, it probably would have fit on X pants. It would have fit on X pants significantly better. So this is the side lock Marvel legends, you know, head power effect. And this is the one that came with X pants. That's so it's, weird. It's it is really it a is bizarre weird to try choice. to figure out like what their actual intent was. Like, did they yeah. just have that shape laying around from her? So they're like, okay, let's just use that, but make it a Wolverine belt. Yeah, it's it was absurd at at best. Yeah. What, it's very what if when they were doing the tooling, that they only had a certain amount of space, and they're like, what can we do in this space? I know. 
Like we'll put, you know, we'll put that like effect, but it can't be big enough because like it won't fit correctly in the mold. Like that would be the only thing that would kind of make sense to me. To, to me, the, the thing I would have wanted so much for this toy was an optic blast effect. Yeah. I would have liked mm-hmm. that too. Yeah. If you didn't do Sabretooth and Wolverine and you didn't do the little Psylocke, you know, mini energy butterfly, but you did, and then you gave us a Cyclops optic blast or two Wolverine claws, that, that would have made so much more sense. That would be a lot cooler. I would have liked yeah. that. I would have really liked an optic blast for it because it's just like, at default, it really is a very Cyclopsy face. So that oh, would have yeah. been really fun for it to have. Yeah. I agree. So, like, the two accessories we did get, you know, the 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 Psylocke Claw and the Wolverine Claw, like, they are kind of cool. Like, they're fun. I think they're fun little homages. It's like, yeah. this weird jet plane robot guy can produce things kind of like the mutant powers of the things that ride in them. Sure. That's fun. <laughs> you have to make up your own fiction for these things. As always. I, mean, it's, I think Hasbro's done a great job with blast effects over yeah. the last, you know, four or five years. I mean, we, we've been getting some good ones now with, with uh, Transformers, but the blast effects that have been coming with Marvel Legends and Power Rangers toys are really, really cool looking blast effects. And I think you, you're you seeing that with this toy. Probably, this might be the best representation of blast effects we've gotten with a Transformer. It's a good one, yeah. I don't know. I kind of like the Jetfire ones. Like, those are pretty good. They're not bad. Yeah, no, they're not bad. They're cool. I just it, They're very sort of generic. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that, that is kind of neat because if like, you just put them all over Omega Supreme if you wanted to. Or, because right. you know, Omega Supreme came with the other one, you know, the blast effects. So. These are thematic. These really yes, these are thematic. Something. Yeah. Yeah, that's And cool. obviously, everyone loves blast effects. Like, who couldn't love blast effects, right? <laughs> everyone should. It's the right thing. <laughs> but it's just like, all right, so this is the, the Green Ranger, <laughs> you know, sword here. And you got the energy you know, effect around that. And it's just, you know, when you have this thing on your shelf with that kind of thing going on, the, the effect is really, it really does pop on the shelf a lot more. That's like the the, lightning on, um, the Wolfie guy from Cyberverse. Thunderhowl. Thunderhowl. Yes. Yes. It's very similar. Yes. Thank you. Got a good one. Um, the, they, they started to do some blast effects with Star Wars Black Series, like the, the flame effect with the star, with the Black Series incinerator trooper is really really nice as well so so hasbro has been doing yeah hasbro's been doing some very very nice blast effects whether you're into it or not they're it's it's an area that they've got some very good quality in at this point in time i agree so just one last little accessory is the instructions i thought it was fun that they did them kind of comic book style like they made the little numbering and the way the panels are done kind of comic booky I thought it was cute. I didn't pick up on that till now. That's it's neat. a it's a light touch, but it's yeah. a nice touch. You know, there's no like little story or anything about X Pants, so they put in something just to make it feel like it was more X Men. I thought it's cool. It's a little thing. Yeah, I guess they they definitely you know can't really do a crossover comic book, right? Because like Marvel owns it, and you know, since they have the ID, like IDW has a Transformers license. Like I was kind of thinking about that because some of the other ones, like Back to the they Future, could do has it. had a deal. I mean, I'm sure you IDW, could do something. IDW has licenses with Disney to do like the Star Wars adventure stuff and the New High Republic stuff, so they, it could happen. That'd be fun. So I, this is the longest we've gone before getting to a robot mode in a long time. So just quickly on the transformation, Lucas, it sounded like you didn't love it because you finally did the transformation today. Oh, man. Like, oh, I so I I have like conflicting thoughts on this figure, like overall. But like in, in part of it is just the transformation. Like I I did not like it at all. Um, I, I mean, first off, like if you're going to do it, like grab a spudger or like you know a, a, a knife or just something like a pry bar just something to, like because man like getting those like leg parts apart like took a little bit of doing and i think you'd break a nail like if you're if you're trying to get your fingernail in there like 
I don't know. I, I just, I did not like that part at all. And like, like, I don't think that the transformation itself is that bad, but for whatever reason the like, I don't know if it's like the plastic quality or the, just the QC or just what, whatever it is, like it just did not like, it, it was not a fun experience for me. Yeah, I've only gone from Jet to Robot, and I, I liked it, actually. I thought it was a fun transformation. I really enjoyed the fact that I thought that it felt like I was making um, movie Jetfire until I got to the legs, and then I just started changing it into someone else. And I, I just That was kind of fun to me, because it was like, I'm playing with a movie Jetfire toy, and then it was like, no, I'm going to give him real legs, and I'm going to give him normal shoulders, and I'm going to, like, he's going to have a different head that isn't all droopy, and... It was just kind of cool to me that the way that kind of worked out. But then after transforming them, I put, you know, these leg joints in, as you do. You actually finish transforming the figure. There's a tab that you put in on this part of the leg here that's inside of here. And that tab was in there so hard that I spent the last two weeks trying to figure out a way to pry that apart so I could see Jet Mode again. And not until today, I came up with the idea of taking off my earring that I'm wearing and wedging it in there to anchor it out of there to yank onto the earring harder to get better handhold on it. I was finally able to get it out of there to be able to even think about going back to jet mode. I didn't have time because that was like, you know, just a few hours ago that I was able to figure that out. So it's like, I really liked what I've done so far at the transformation, but I can't speak to going back to jet at all and i have a feeling going back to jet will be hell yes <laughs> it's excruciating um you know rob and peter were saying on monday that like hey we're we're engineers you know we we know how to kind of look at things and see where parts move i, I think with the legs the way the legs like kind of compact is that you actually have the joint of where you unclip the leg to, to unseal the two halves of it to split it open that's underneath the actual like engine part that you're seeing so you don't really see where the tabs are and you don't really see where the hinge is so it's very very difficult to see where you should be applying pressure and that is frustrating and and scary because i'm like i don't want to break this thing I know I need to put some force to it, but I'm not sure where I should be applying that force. That makes perfect sense and sounds terrible. I don't look yeah. forward to that. And and yeah. I just feel like in general, like I just question like, you know, who this is for. And like, I mean, I like the figure and we'll probably, you know, talk, you know, more about the positives here in a minute, but like, like, I could never recommend this. Like, if someone was like, oh, hey, my 10-year-old, like, loves X-Men, has been watching that, and loves Transformers, like, should I get this figure for them? I, yeah. I would be like, no, like, it will make them hate Transformers if they get it. Because, like, there's no way that my, like, kid could transform this figure. Just, like, you know, the way, the way that but it is. I think that's movie versus studio series in general, though. Like, I, I have not owned a Studio Series figure. Well, I guess um, Scrap Metal is the Constructicon I have. He's actually relatively easy. But the other ones I've owned have all been, you know, hard enough that I wouldn't want to give it to a 10-year-old, basically. I wouldn't want to give it to a super young kid. Like, a, a reasonably young kid, but not a super young kid. I, I would agree with that, but I feel like this is, like, another level up past that. Like, I... <laughs> I, I just think that this was like most of the studio six year old figures. figured it out. My six year old got this from Ooh. Jet to Robot mode. I didn't see him do it. I don't know oh. if he somehow got help at some point or if he was looking at the instructions. He I had him in Jet mode. I'm I'm ninety percent sure he my son did this on his own. I'm not trying to brag anything like that. Like if anything, right now I think my son's an asshole and and yeah, he never gets to play with my Transformers again after the way he acted tonight. But I had him in jet mode and like I was letting my son play with him and I was just like, wait, he's in robot mode now. I don't I didn't do that. And yeah, he, he got even the way the legs like turn around. So I don't know if he just has played with my Transformers for enough time that he figured it out. 
or yeah, if you I, use the instructions or if I had transformed them and just forgotten about it is possibility as well. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't totally say a kid couldn't do it. Getting back to jet mode is a different story, but getting it into robot mode is slightly easier. I mean, I think that the actual, the, like the transformation itself is not, I mean, it, it's like relatively complex, but not bad. It's just like you said with the tabs and whatnot, like trying to undo those tabs is, is really difficult. And so I guess like, you know, if your kid or whatever can do that, I guess that, you know, it might not be that bad or like you, like if they just don't care and they're just pulling at it or whatever, like they might be able to do it, I guess. Like if they're not worried about potentially breaking tabs off and whatnot. So I get actually mad at those tabs and the legs, like, like real yeah. actual mad. It was like, cause it was such a, just such a disappointment. Cause I was like, glowing review about this toy until i got to that and i was like damn it now i don't get to say it's perfect just yes. wait until you change it back to jet mode and you have to get all of <clears> these <throat> joints aligned up perfectly so that you can get the engines here tabbed on properly that both times i put it back into jet mode probably took me 20 minutes alone in transforming this toy i should probably line up someone for window repairs when i throw this out the window Yes, yes, that will that will infuriate you to get it. Like it, the way it comes packaged is in jet mode. Uh, if we haven't explained that already, to get it as clean and as nice and as tabbed together as it does when you get it out of the package, it it takes some doing. And there's about four joints between. There's there's two joints here, you know, right where the leg connects to to the the hip there. Um, and then there's two joints for the double jointed knee that you have to align all four of those joints properly so that it lines up seamlessly here. And it is, it, it will, yes, cause you to potentially throw the toy out the window. That sounds really fun. So, yeah. I have a, a, just a question there. I've had two series Jetfire for a while. I actually have two copies cause I'm that guy that needs one for combined mode and one for just being Jetfire. But, like, if you're going to change something that much, why not bother just making a new mold? Like, I don't know. Really I'm, that I'm, much I'm more glad to hear that to, you have Studio Series that? Jetfire. I, I, I was hoping that someone on this would have both toys. I know. Like, I really wish don't. we did, too. I'm the only one. Yeah. Because I wanted I to honestly, see how this compares. When I side by side of the two jet modes, there weren't. There was enough differences to merit a remold, but there wasn't enough differences from, in my mind, to merit a whole new figure. I really think the big change is how these legs work. And I don't know how many parts they actually had to change in order to make that okay. happen. Yeah, it <laughs> just seems like it's a more ton of new same. parts. I think... Um, mm, mm, I'm sure the I'm chat... Take, I'm looking at yours. Oh, look off. Oh, the arms are all different. The, the shoulders different. might be the, the same. legs are different. Legs are different. I mean, there's a Chest ton is different. Of, there's a ton of so molding. yeah. Like yeah. why would and you? And the transformation is all a little bit different stuff. too. Yeah. But the like you could only is very get similar. license for one Blackbird, but this isn't licensed by Lockheed. So it like, is licensed. It, is. it has is in it the licensed? box Lockheed it Martin. Is. Yeah. Oh well, then there you go. That's that's the answer. That's why it's that way. Yeah. It has to be the same Blackbird, right? There you go. That's it. Why that's do you it. like this? <laughs> that's pretty crazy that that's licensed because it's not even like a real plane. It doesn't look like that. I don't know. And, and I feel like in general with this figure that like, you know, when they go through the QC process, I feel like at some point they just were like, you know, like this is good enough. Like whatever. Just throw it, sh Just ship it. I, I don't care. Like, like, the, like if a, you know, some other figure got like, you know, whatever, five passes that this one got two. I mean, it just, it just does not seem like, I don't know. I, I just, it, it, it does feel like this one came out quicker than the other crossovers. That's a point. It did. And I it's bigger and more complicated off. than the other ones. And it's more remolding. I could be completely off on this or whatever, you know, it's just like, that's my interpretation of it. That like, I do like, it's just, 
I haven't gotten a figure like this for a while that like feels not like where the quality is not that great. I have not had a bad experience with this figure. I'm, I'm different from you in that aspect. I'm different from a lot of people I've heard. Like so far it's been an all positive experience except for the legs getting stuck. Like that is the only thing that I've not enjoyed about this figure so far. Otherwise I thought it was a lot of fun and just kind of a wacky figure. Lucas, to me, I kind of agree with your point, but more around the design of the figure. Because, like, those panels up by the head, those two panels that sit up there by the back of the head, those just feel, like, so annoying in robot mode. Like, when you're looking at the figure head on, like, you you, you both are holding them right now. It doesn't look that bad. But when you're holding the figure, any time you shift it from other than looking head on, Yes, those panels just like stick out like such a sore thumb. And Thank you. they're they're fine on the original figure. I mean, that's right. part of like Jetfire's like old man hunched overness, but then the yeah, hands still like here. his hunchback. That is pretty weird. Yeah. So And it's... again, like back to the remolding thing. Like, if you're gonna remold everything else, why keep that part? Like that's right. weird. It's it's an integral part of the jet mode to make yeah. the jet mode look good. You know, there's there's something that I will like, you know, always kind of ask myself when I'm looking at a toy and it used to be more easier to see than it is these days. Like, which mode did they start with? Did they start the engineering and the design with the vehicle mode or the robot mode? This one definitely started with the vehicle mode. Like, we have to make a robot out of this vehicle. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess just like actually talk about the robot mode for a little bit here. The I think the design and the look of the figure is really fun. It's just like tacky X-Men nonsense everywhere. You know, he's got the X across the chest, Cy- Cyclops style thing. He's, he's got, got the visor with Wolverine ears. He's got the belt. All of those details are reasonably well done. I feel like the paint is a little... Um, eh, on the kneecaps just because it's yellow paint on anything. But other than that, like, I think it's really well done as far as the paint apps and the design. Like, it doesn't look like any specific X Men character, it looks like a parody of X Men, which I think is really fun and amusing in a lot of ways. Anything you guys want to add on that? I mean, I think that the paint on the figure, like, overall, like, I like it. Like, I mean, I I think it's a good, like, I don't know. It's an interesting looking figure. Like, I like the, the blue and yellow and whatnot. I mean, I think it's more interesting looking, like you said, than the other crossovers, um, you know, from, from that respect. But I, I don't know. It just, for whatever reason, it just doesn't. And, like, that wobble is annoys the crap it's out of me what you're doing right there. Hey, that's how I dance, man. And that wobble is is a pain in the butt when you transform as well. If you actually lift the chest up, he has an ab crunch that you barely use in the uh, the, the robot mode itself. So he does. Weird. Yeah. It's, a lot about this figure is just weird. It is. This, this figure is really weird. That's why I like it. It, the design of it reminds me of something that would have come from if there had been a Transformers X-Men crossover comic book in the 90s. Yeah. This is, this is the, you know, the toy that would have come out of that. This is what the, the Black Bird would have changed into, again, in the 90s. Not today's design, but if, if like, you know, Dreamwave did the whole G.I. Joe and, 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 you know, forget the other company that owned the G.I. Joe property. They did the G.I. Joe Transformers crossovers. Like, if you had that in the 90s with X-Men and Transformers, this is what the Blackbird would have turned into. I agree with that. So I'm showing off the arm articulation. It's normal. It's good. It's good arm articulation. He's got that kind of strange thing where he's got, you know, both normal real shoulders and then weirdo jet fire shoulders. I finally got them to tab in where they don't really move around too much in here now but for a while they were just kind of loose flying all over the place so it looks kind of awkward but once it's kind of tabbed in there it actually looks like a solid chest on him he's got a good you know fully moving head except for the fact that it clashes with the stupid back thing quite a bit the back thing is well articulated (laughs) if you want to rotate this theater um 
And then the legs are pretty much the same. The double jointed knees, which are, you know, definitely a jet fire holdover, are weird and kind of hard to bend, but they do let you get a lot of poses. And there's a teensy bit of ankle tilt. It's not as much as we're used to these days, but it's still fine. It's more than zero. And it works just fine. I think the legs end up okay. And, you know, you don't get full waist rotation because it runs into the backpack, which is an egregious poop face. Oof. And the, oh, the wrist rotate too. So, like, the articulation, I would say, overall is good. You know, it's not it's not perfect. It's not quite, like, up to Earthrise and Siege standards, but it's very close. I feel like if you're someone who is uh, an X-Men fan, you've been buying Marvel Legends, and you haven't bought a Transformer in a while, you'd probably be pretty surprised at how well, how well articulated Expanse is. Because Transformers have become, like, some of the best articulated toys on the market. You know, I've always loved articulation on figures, and I always used to, like, wish that my Transformers could keep up with, like, my Figma and my, like, SH Fig Arts and all those things. And now they definitely do. And that's, like, been something that's made me really happy lately. I think that's probably why I I cry when I don't get my waist or my wrist swivel and I don't get my ankle tilt because it's like, oh, I don't get to have cool articulation this time. Well, yeah. So, hey, that's part of it. But anywho, I think he articulates really well. It's just that because he's based on jet fire, a lot of poses he'll end up looking strange. Because he'll start to have a little bit of that jet fire look to him. But, you know, he is a normal proportion humanoid. Like, there's nothing of the jet fire proportions left to him. He's, you know, arms are normal length, legs are normal length. So when he starts jet firing, it's a little odd. And that's part of why he looks so bad from the side. The side is rough. That backpack doesn't really clean up at all. If and the you... wings are just there. I guess if you uh, display your figures from the side back, you're, you know. <laughs> you're just out of luck. Yeah. That side view is not pretty. I don't think it's what that it? bad. Like, as far as, like, because I just don't think you're ever going to have him, like, looking like that. No, it doesn't bother me. I, it's just, yeah. it doesn't Something look good. Yeah. It's, it's not quite to Rob's commentary on Hasbro Unicron of the flat jack back stack but it's it's close <laughs> i haven't heard that all those words strung together that way yet yeah i've been drinking a little bit so that was tough to say oh, nice. <laughs> flat jack back stack yeah and the the wings in the back here the head wings are yeah like you guys said they are pretty egregious i wish i could put them away somewhere I, I really dislike how they show, I don't know if it's on the box or in the instructions, that you can have the little mini dudes, f- like, standing on those, that back flap. Um, no, you can't. You can't. I thought There's it no made way. it look like they were, like, like you know, uh, foot pegs for it, which there are not. But, but yeah, it, it shows that officially somewhere either in the box or in the instructions. My wolver can't even stand. Like, Sabretooth can stand. Wolver needs help. Sabretooth has to hold him up. Are you intentionally calling him Wolver? Or is that... I always call Wolverine. Okay. I didn't... I, I didn't just call him Wolver. Yeah, you just have to get over Anna calling things weird things. I didn't know if like, that was her, like, nickname because he's, like, small and cute and therefore he's Wolver. Oh, no. Well, actually... I guess that's kind of true because I started using it after some like horrible deformed Wolverine picture years ago. I said he was Wolver and not Wolverine. And then I guess this is very much a Wolver. Yeah. See, when I have to explain things. I mean, that'd be great. Um, Oh yeah. We didn't know that the landing gear is literally like coming off his belt. Like I said, I just put it back, so it's like the belt goes on, but there's really nothing good to do with it. Yeah, because the official instructions show it just going up along his rib cage. Yay! That also that also doesn't look good. Surprise. No. Yeah. <laughs> I think one positive feature I don't know if we've touched upon is the the flip up visor. Oh, the flip up visor is super cool. Yeah. Flip. There we go. 
So you know he's got a goofy face. I love it's his goofy, goofy face. face. That's great. It very much looks I, like a 90s comic book character. Yeah, I think Phil's right that this is what would have happened in the 90s if this had happened in the 90s. Like, it's not supposed to be a modern figure. It comes in the 90s box, and it looked like the 90s versions of the X-Men. Yeah, I, I think Phil's right here. And you gotta, you have to look at it through that lens. And I, I think that's what makes it so cool to me, is it's just a tacky 90s X-Men thing. That's what makes me happy about it. But yeah, I it's mean, definitely not flawless, for sure. I, I would say, like, I don't hate it. Like, um, I, I don't like the transformation, but I, I don't hate the figure overall. I would say, like, if you can get it on sale, it's not bad. Like, if you're an X-Men fan, I think it's, you know, like, something to definitely add to your collection. I don't feel bad. Like, like I would still rate this as the worst crossover of the ones I have, but I don't have uh, Maverick. So. It looks worse than Maverick. Maverick has paint issues. I, I have the Maverick and not this one. Maverick does have paint issues, but it's at least a fun figure to you know flip back and forth. This looks like it's a pain, and you guys have all said it's a pain. So, I think Maverick would would uh, edge it out just a bit for you. If I didn't have connection to both, you know, sources on this, I would not be as big of a fan of this toy. That's probably the case for me as well. Like I. I think it requires me to like X-Men and Transformers in order to really like this and to like tacky, weird, goofy stuff like that. The whole fact this is an Anna toy is part of the reason I like it. I think that's this, the thing I'm like, missing. My internal storyline for this guy is that he is just such a weird goofball that whether he shows up at like a Transformers hanging out or X-Men hanging out, they're all like, ah, oh, who invited this guy? <laughs> Oh, it's freaking X Pants again. Yes. Grief. Ah, oh, dude, how did X Pants find out about the party? Yeah, I I love Transformers. I like X Men a lot. Uh, th- this doesn't feel like a Reese's cup to me. This feels like things that need to stay apart. And and I could I could totally see that. Like just kind of knowing, kind of you know spending a few years with this fandom and knowing what a lot of people like tells me that I shouldn't universally recommend this. Like, if most people thought like me in this fandom, I would be like, yeah, everybody should get this. It's great. It's like the goofiest toy in the world, and you'll have fun with it because it's weird and unique. But I know that isn't exactly what everybody's out there for. So if you frequently agree with me on the weird crap I like, you probably want this. If you don't, then you should probably be very careful about whether or not you obtain it. I feel like for me that this is going to go on the shelf like with my other crossovers and he will just stay in whatever mode I put him in forever. And like, so I'm not, the transformation issue is not going to be a problem after a while because he just, just won't touch him. So I, I think that's okay for me, but like, I don't know. I, I, I think this is probably like, again, like I like the goofiness. Like I like all the things you're saying, Anna, it just annoys me to have a figure like this that I don't like to flip back and forth. Can I just say that this is the only crossover figure that I don't look at and go, why do I own this? The other ones I look at, I go, why do I own these? Cause I, because I didn't see Ghostbusters until I was like 30 or 30 probably like 33 or so. And I've still never seen Back to the Future. But this one, it's like, oh, I ate lots of X-Men. Don't watch Back to the Future now. It's 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 kind of cringy these days. You know, I mean, I'm not saying it's not bad. I'm not saying it's not a good movie. There are things in the movie. There are themes in the, there are things and themes in the movie that seem wildly inappropriate for 2021. <laughs> Well, there's probably a lot of stuff like that, but like, I it still holds up for me. But I've seen the movie so many times that it just right. It's kind of yeah. like Ghostbusters. Like both of those are just ingrained in my brain that I can't like think of them a different way. I really enjoyed Ghostbusters when I saw it. 
I had not the seen Back to the Future in probably 10 or 15 years, and we watched it with my son over the summer. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, um, like when Marty McFly's dad is like peeping, you know, a peeping Tom in the tree, it was like, oh, I don't remember that. That was, that's not, no, that's not cool. Yeah. It's not like they yeah. were glorifying that, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they weren't glorifying it, but like the sheer fact that it wasn't just like immediately like, dude, you, you, we, we need to arrest you. Like, what are you doing? Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, You're right. Pretty cringy. Yeah. It's that's like, I get that was like in the fifties, but it was still just like, oh no, I guess, wait, was that cool for Marty in the eighties? That Like, I know like Marty was just like, yeah, kind of not cool, but just, yeah. All right. Whatever. Weird tangent. But, Everybody um, <laughs> thinks their dad is bearded and appropriate, so he yeah. probably just attributed it that way. But uh, anyway, yeah. so I guess Phil, like, what do you think? Would you are are you happy with your purchase? I'm happy with my purchase. I'm glad I got some sort of deal with it. I would I would recommend this toy if you like '90s X Men and you like Transformers. I'd recommend this toy better if you don't pay full price. Yeah. Which, I mean, who wouldn't say that about any toy, but still. I agree with that part. But I would say, like, Grimlock, you know, like, if you are if you have a Grimlock in this, like, in your hand at Target, like, get the Grimlock, you know what I mean? Oh, it's a solid robot toy. Like, I would recommend that to someone who just likes robots, you know? Someone was like, oh, I grew up with, like, Gundam, and I like, like, Battletech and all cool robot designs. I'd be like, this is a fun robot toy. You should get it. But this one, I would be like, you're going to think this is an annoying mess. You probably should stay away from it. (laughs) Yeah, this would not be the first figure I would get for, like, a budding Transformers fan. Yeah, baby's first Transformer, this is not... (laughs) I'm waiting for the rescue bots expanse. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I could right. be convinced if they guy. did like an X force expanse and made it black, then I'd be like, okay, it's really the blackbird. Give it to me. Uh, but beyond that, you know, maybe if it's like 30 bucks or something in the end, I'll grab it on a whim, but uh, I don't see this coming to my house anytime soon. What is be kind of a fun like inverse clones thing to do though if it was black just have it on the shelf with jet fire and then be like which one is which you don't know until you transform it is it x pants or is it a grumpy old man you don't know which one you're more upset shows up to the party they have different front ends it's fine i was stretching a little christian i was trying to have fun that's what i do I do. That's this is I a like serious that. toy podcast, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Robot fun. <laughs> little little men, not so fun. Ugh. I keep forgetting those are there. She doesn't like little men, and she doesn't like thick men. Like, is it just oh you know? Goodness. Is this, is this what Anna is and the like? three bears How of men? You, uh. you guys. <laughs> Um, check out TFYLP, uh, uh, this week, um, uh, on Monday nights, uh, who knows if cut the tape will happen this week. So we'll see. Rick had his tooth out last week, so he couldn't, couldn't do one, I guess, but, uh, we'll see if he, you know, puts one up this week. Um, so yeah, uh, are you guys doing Dark Cybertron for Book Club? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, Book Club. Last three issues of Dark last Cybertron. Ten through twelve, right? Dark Cybertron. That sounds like it. We're gonna see the resolution of the Dark Cybertron legacy. So, How exciting! Book Club Sunday nights, nine thirty Eastern, eight thirty Central on the uh, TF Talk Discord. Um, so the link should be on Twitter and on uh, YouTube as well. So if you want to check that out, um, thank you guys for joining us. Thanks to, uh, everyone in the chat, uh, Paul, Randall, Catherine, uh, Ron, did I miss anyone, Peter? So, but yeah, thanks guys. Is there any final thoughts before we go? I think I was, I was disappointed when I found out, 
And I, I think one of my biggest problems with this toy is it is a remold of a Bayverse toy versus the other ones so far that have been remolds are remolds of chug toys. What what makes this kind of annoying, again, is that it's a remold of a Bavers toy. So it's spindly. It's got a lot of weird joints. And they they made it work. It just it's, it's frustrating to play with. I echo your final thought. That is one of the most biggest bummers about this toy, is instead of being a Blackbird out of a... Generations toy that is easy and fun to play with. It's a Blackbird out of an annoying Studio Series figure. <laughs> That's still cute and fun, but... Well, we've had two weeks of fan-requested reviews, so let's make it a third. What do you guys want us to do next week? Let us know, and then we'll do it. Dance, dance, dance. Oh, we, we may not necessarily do a show next week since I'm Oh, off. right. Uh, if Rob... I don't know. We'll, we'll see if somebody can do something. But uh, next time, yeah, next time, what would you like? We'll us to still do? take well, requests. So we love requests. Yeah. It time. makes our jobs way easier. <laughs> yeah, because we're super indecisive. Paul's got a request that I don't yeah. know if we'll have it by then. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you said unicorns, but I don't know if we have unicorns yet. I'll never have unicorn. I didn't order it. Well, Paul said that he wants to do a special, special show whenever yeah, whenever we get unicorns in. So. Oh, Anna's choice? Okay, calculation key part two. Oh, God. I mean, there is that, whatever that new calculation king thing is, that green thing that you're like, where do I order this? Yeah, I'm super excited for um, Devastation Prints. I haven't even seen that. Is that a new mold or is it a repaint of calculation? It's a new mold. It's, I'm, oh. I'm not even sure who's making it. Like, I didn't recognize the maker's name at all, but it's definitely a, like, Calculation King style. This is Devastator, but it's all different. But it's also the same, but it's different type of deal. Yeah. The, the, the reason is, is because the designers, like, Wei Zhang or whatever, got raided by the, like, yes. authorities or whatever. So they're no longer a company. So the designers had to go sell it to some other, you know, knockoff company. Botropolis Rescue is coming up a few that's times. A good one. We all have okay. it. Yeah, that's a good that's a good one. Yeah, so. Skelly's cosplay is a good idea. All right. Well thanks guys, and we will see you next well whenever. We'll we'll see ya. See you when we see, see you. See you next time. <laughs>